Welcome back. In this video, we will be looking at how to configure an access list on a Microtech device or access point specifically to stop people from connecting that aren't authorized. So this is a great tool that we can use so that only our clients can connect if we know what their MAC addresses are. And this will then prevent users that are externally connecting to the access point from connecting because it will just fail when they try and connect. Alrighty, let's get into the video. All right, so let's go about setting up some device hardening on our Microtech. So I'm just going to navigate to the wireless. And then before we set up anything on access list, I actually want to go into the WLAN interface. And I want to show you some things quickly. So from here, we can actually see a default authenticate, default forward and hide SSID. The default authenticate and default forward are enabled by default. And what they do is the default authenticate allows users to connect to the access point as long as it's enabled and it's got a security profile, any client can connect. Like that's what default authenticate does. If you disable this, then only clients that are in the access list will be able to connect. So that is quite useful if we want to restrict access to the Microtech because then only devices whose MAC addresses we know will be able to connect, nobody else. So if you can see some Snoopy neighbor in your registration table, this is how you can go about kicking them out is just by disabling the default authenticate and then adding all your devices in the access list and then they won't be able to connect again. Default forward in essence allows clients to see or forward frames between each other over the wireless network. So if you disable that, it just means that the clients will not be able to communicate directly with each other. However, they will still be able to connect onto the access point and they will still be able to break out to the internet. So this is more or less if you have a bunch of microtics connecting to an access point, maybe you don't want them all to see each other. You could disable the default forward and then that would put a stop to that. And then the hide SSID, this will just prevent your SSID from being broadcasted out into the, the immediate area so that people can't see your SSID. So the only way they'd be able to connect is if they know what your SSID is. So that is actually pretty good as well to restrict access to your Microtech because if the SSID is not being broadcast, so if I scan for it, then it, it can't be picked up. So people can't just connect to it. Only people that know the SSID will be able to connect. All right, so we've gone over these options. Let's quickly set up some access list. Now, if I go to the access list, I just want to explain some things quickly. This works exactly like firewall filter rules or mangle rules or such. This all works in a sequential manner, meaning it's all read from top to bottom. So depending on which entries you have in here, it will read all of the entries line for line until it gets to the end. And then if nothing is matched, then it will use the global settings, which is the default authenticate and default forward that we saw. And if there is no default authenticate, then only these devices in the access list will be able to connect. It's also important to note that items will stop being matched the moment there is a hit on a MAC address or so. So let's say you put two entries in and uh, the first entry, or it's the same MAC address for both entries. The moment that first entry gets hit, the second one will just get ignored. So pay attention to what type of uh, stuff you set up with an access list. Now I'm just going to hit the plus so you can see what it looks like when we want to set up an access list. And here you can specify the MAC address. So if you know what the MAC address is, is of your wireless devices, let's say your TVs, your clients, your phones, you could add their MAC addresses here and you could set the interface to the WLAN or you could leave it on any. And then only those MAC addresses will be able to connect. We also get some cool features like signal strength range, which means if this MAC address connects, it needs to be within this signal strength space in order to connect. So you can tune this as well. So only devices that have, let's say decent or are close enough to the access point will be able to connect. Um, if the device goes too far away, then it will just lose registration. And then we get some other features like the APTX limit and client TX limit. So this is more or less useful for people that are using Microtix on both ends because the APTX limit will set what the access point transmits out to the client. So here you can rate limit the speeds to your clients and the client TX limit if the other devices are Microtech, this access point can then dictate what speeds the, the client can transmit at. However, if the client is not a Microtech, you cannot really specify or restrict them since it won't accept any anything. So the, the opposite end, if you connect like with a ubiquity on the remote end as a station, then that will still cause some issues. All right, then we've got our authentication and forwarding, which I'm going to leave on here because we do want that. 
Uh, you can also set some stuff like VLANs here. And you can also even set a schedule. Now this is quite nice for, let's say if you maybe have a, a child or something and you want to restrict their access to the access point at a specific time. I know Microtech has kid control. I've never really worked on it, so I can't really tell you too much about it. But in this uh, access list method, you could in essence set a time that uh, this access list will be valid for. So let's say on specific days it will work. So we, we can say it will work from the morning at 0800 hours until uh, let's say 1800 or maybe that's a bit strict. Let's say 2000 hours, which is 8 p.m. So this would mean that a child let's maybe remove the sun let's add sunday let's remove friday and saturday because in this case this will only take effect between eight to eight from sunday to thursday so friday evenings and saturday evenings the child will still be able to use the access point and connect but if they aren't within that time frame they will not be able to connect because the access list would then become invalid during that time period all right so that's what i wanted to show here Let's quickly add a device to access list. So I've already got a client connecting to this access point. Here we can see the signal strength, the rate and all that. But it's awesome we can see what their radio name is and the MAC address. But if I double click on this entry, what's really cool to me is you can actually just directly here say copy to access list. And now what this will do is it will add an entry in the access list already with that MAC address and the settings. So now I've already added my client because I know what its access point is because I could get it in the registration table. Now I can see the client has connected, what its MAC address is and what the uptime is. Please note that when you do add stuff to the access list, it will disconnect the client. So <laughs> try and not do it in a live environment. It, it's just a few seconds, but it will disconnect cl clients. All right, so let's actually see if this is working correctly. I just want to see, is my default authenticate on? It is still on. So in theory, clients would still be able to connect if they aren't part of the access list. So just disable the default authenticate so I can demonstrate to you in real time what happens. So now if I go to my registration, since the client is in the access list, it will be able to connect again. So let's just make sure, there we go, the connection is back up and running. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to disable the access list. So once this is disabled, will the client be able to connect? It will drop the registration but the client should not be able to reconnect now. And I just quickly want to get onto that client's Winbox session so that I can show you what the client is seeing when they try and connect as well. Now, here is our client. And if I go to my wireless interface, I'm going to run a scan. I'm going to start the scan. And there we go, there's the TMB Wi-Fi. Let me try and connect to the TMB Wi-Fi. So it's going to say searching for network. but it's, it's just going to be searching for network. It's never going to be able to actually establish the connection because the access list is not permitting it. But the moment I enable this and I go back to my client, we'll be able to actually see that it will be able to connect now. So let's see searching for network, connected to ESA, so it, it has connected to our MicroTik. If I look at my neighbors, I can see that it's connected on the WLAN. Awesome. So that is a very brief overview of how you can set up an access list as well as what the default authenticate, default forward, and the hide SSID could be used for. Let's quickly talk about the connect list while we're here, since it makes sense and I, I feel like this doesn't warrant its own video. Um, access list, you've seen now, it's how the access point can determine who can connect to it. Now the connect list does the exact opposite. It dictates what you can connect to. So if you set up something in a connect list, this will essentially mean that you can only connect to that MAC address. That is what connect list does. So I'm going to actually set this up from the client's perspective. So this is the client. I'll maximize this. And then from the client, let's set up a connect list. Now this is actually quite uh, straightforward to do because we can also look at the registration and we could also just do a copy to connect list. And once we've done the copy to connect list, it will actually appear in our collect list now. And you can see which interface it's on, what the MAC address is of the AP that we're connecting to. We're enabling that it can connect there because if you don't allow that, then it will not be able to connect. 
and here we can set what the SSID is of that access point. So if you know what the SSID is, you can set it here. You can also set stuff like signal strength range so that a client can become disconnected if it moves away or out of a certain like uh, signal range. Okay, so that covers the connect list as well. All right, so I'm going to end off the video here. I'd like to thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the future videos. See ya.